hello students welcome to a completely new video for this week and in this video of course we are discussing the same chapter that is ch chapter 9 respiration in organisms but the topic that we are going to discuss in this video will be completely different first of all let us just have a short recap of whatever we have studied till now we have seen what respiration is we have seen that respiration can be of two types sorry it can be conducted it can be it can take place in two phases that is external and internal respiration internal respiration can further be of two types that is aerobic and anaerobic respiration we have seen that there are two respiratory gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide why do we need these why do we need to obtain oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide we need obtain we need to obtain oxygen to produce atp in the cells and also we need to eliminate carbon dioxide to prevent the toxic effects that carbon dioxide can have on the cells of our body and ultimately on our cells now as we have seen what respiration is so it is the process of obtaining oxygen and delivering it to the cells for cellular respiration and removing carbon dioxide from the cells we also have seen gaseous exchange what is gaseous exchange it is the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen between the environment and organism it takes place in all organisms by the process of diffusion which is the movement of the molecules from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration in this picture you can see that the molecules are localized at one particular point so at this point the concentration of these molecules is higher whereas other position in the same box the concentration is much less so these molecules by just random movement will try to move to those places where the concentration is less and hence what will happen an equilibrium will be reached so this is only known as diffusion and by the process of diffusion only the gases are exchanged now what is respiratory surface so it is the area where gaseous exchange takes place and we know that it consists of lungs circulation that is the circulatory system and the cells now what are the gases that are being transported or exchanged the gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide so what are the adaptations of the respiratory surfaces which makes the exchange of gases easy first of all the respiratory surfaces are moist that is because of moisture the it is easy for the gases to dissolve before they can diffuse the membrane is very thin so that rapid diffusion of the gases can take place large surface area so that efficient gases exchange can take place it is covered by network of blood capillaries so that efficient exchange and transport of respiratory gases can take place so this is about the different adaptations of the respiratory structures now from where are we acquiring the oxygen that we need for respiration the oxygen that we need from respi for respiration can be acquired directly from the atmosphere or it can be acquired from the dissolved water okay the oxygen that is dissolved in water can be acquired by the aquatic animals whereas terrestrial animals they or terrestrial organisms they acquire oxygen directly from the atmosphere in unicellular organisms talking of the unicellular organisms they are too small so diffusion is very rapid in such types of cells okay likewise if we talk of a protozoa that is amoeba the respiratory surface of an unicellular organism is of course the respiratory surface will be its plasma membrane only that is the gaseous exchange that is diffusion will take place with the help of its membrane only and that is sufficient for it to of course to compensate or to to uh, fulfill the energy demand for such small organisms now what are the adaptations as i have told you their small size that is because of its size the surface area to volume ratio is very large and due to this more la uh, due to this large surface area to volume ratio the rate of diffusion is very fast wet surroundings plasma membrane is constantly moist and gases easily dissolve and diffuse across the respiratory surface and also because the plasma membrane is extremely thin so rapid diffusion of gases can take place so these are the adaptations that are present in very simple organisms such as unicellular organisms for the exchange of gases and due to their very large surface area to volume ratio the rate of diffusion is very high in such organisms that is unicellular organism now these organisms do not need any specialized structure for respiration to take place 
Why? Because the concentration of oxygen is higher in surrounding water compared to the cell. So, oxygen directly diffuses into the cell through plasma membrane by simple diffusion. But as the size of the animal will increase, so what about their surface area to volume ratio? Now, as the size of the animal will increase, the surface area to volume ratio will decrease. So, now what about the process of respiration and diffusion. So, the larger the size of organism, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio will be. So, as animals increase in size, what will happen to the rate of consumption of oxygen? Of course, as the size is more, so more oxygen will be required. So, how this demand of oxygen can be fulfilled? The demand of oxygen can be fulfilled by specialized respiratory surfaces or by the development of special respiratory organs. For example, let us see the examples of these organisms, nematode worms and flatworms. The size and shape of the body is extremely small and elongated as in microscopic nematode worms. So, short diffusion pathway is present there. Talking of the flatworms, the body may be thin and flattened, producing a large area for diffusion to take place. So, here since the surface area you can see it is flat and it is broad. So, large surface area for diffusion is provided for these organisms to obtain oxygen and exchange of course for giving out carbon dioxide by their surface only. If, if energy demands are low, the relatively low rate of gas exchange by diffusion may suffice even for a larger thicker body. Example in jellyfish also, it, it is sufficient. But talking of the earthworms, we know earthworms, they, the diffusion takes place through the skin of the worm and also the skin is provided. The skin is supplied with numerous, numerous blood vessels. So, the blood vessels absorb the oxygen and carry it to the body. So, here too this process is sufficient. But let us now see the respiration process in some other insects. So, talking of the respiratory structure of insects, the respiratory structure of insects is known as the tracheal system. It is known as tracheal system which will consist of trachea, ear sacs and spiracles. Now, let us study about all these. So, first of all, the tracheal system of an insect as I have told you will consist of spiracle, then it will consist of trachea and air sacs. Also trachea will divide into thinner tubes which are known as tracheoles. So here you can see the small holes, this is the body wall, this is the body wall of the insect. Air is entering from the external environment, this is the small hole which is known as the spiracles here. Then this is the trachea and further the trachea is dividing into thinner tubes which are known as tracheoles and these are the cells of the insect. The trachea is reinforced with, thin, with rings of chitin which prevent from collapsing as in our body also, in human body also the trachea is provided with C-shaped cartilaginous rings and the purpose is the same as it is here. Now, the tracheal system consists of tiny branching tubes that penetrate the body. Okay, these it consists of many tiny branching tubes which will penetrate the body. What are spiracles? So, these spiracles are pairs of holes. These are holes that are found on the second and third thoracic segments and eight abdominal segments. So, different uh, many holes will be present and these holes are only known as holes that will be present on the body surface of these insects are only known as paricles. So, where are these found? Second and third th thoracic segments because their body is divided into different segments. So, these are present on the different segments of the body and lead into air filled sacs. Spiracles, so what will happen with the help of spiracles? Air will enter, air enters trachea through the spiracles. Spiracles have valves which allow air to go in and out of the body. So, spiracles, these holes, small holes will be there which will be leading to the tube like structure. So, air will enter through the holes and then it will move through the trachea. Air sacs in some larger insects contain, they contain air that speeds up movement of gases during vigorous body movement. Now, tracheal system of insects. It provides for direct exchange between the air and body cells. 
so as i have told you you can see here too so here this is the spiracle small hole you can see this is the spiracle then this is the tube which is the trachea and then further it is dividing into tracheoles which are finally leading directly to the body cells so the oxygen will enter with the help of the spiracle it will be transported with the help of the trachea trachea will further divide into tracheoles through which the air will enter into the cells by the process of diffusion of course where it will be utilized for the breakdown of the glucose to release energy carbon dioxide in turn will be formed and again it will come to the tracheoles by the process of diffusion and then it will pass on to the trachea and finally it will be exhaled out so this is how the process of gases exchange and respiration takes place in insects also so again what are these trachea these are the branch tubes that lead from spiracles they are reinforced with rings of chitin which prevent them from collapsing if trachea collapses surface area is greatly reduced so if the trachea will collapse so what will happen the surface area will get reduced now what are these tracheoles these are numerous that is they are many in number there are tiny end within cells they contains fluid at their tip and they can be thin. they are very thin one cell thick so so uh, why, why do these tracheoles lack a chitin lining because so that the respiratory surface is very thin making the diffusion of oxygen into the cells easy so if they also will have tracheoles so what will happen the membrane will become thick and the thicker membrane in the thicker membranes the process of the exchange of gases that the diffusion will become slow now what are the adaptations of these tracheoles they are large in number the tip of the tracheoles have thin permeable walls so that rapid diffusion of the gases can take place also they have fluid so that the gases can dissolve direct contact with tissues and organs so that easily the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide can take place so air will enter through the spiracle they will go into the trachea trachea when they will then lead to tracheoles and the tracheoles will further lead to the cells where it will be utilized so here you can see as i have told you valves are also present so these this is the view of a valve open valve and a closed valve which also help in the reduction of water loss in the plants now talking about ventilation what is ventilation it is the active movement of air or water over an animal's respiratory surface or one way flow of air through the animal occurs by the process of ventilation air enters in through the thorax and air emerges from the abdomen in our body we are taking in oxygen with the help of nose and air is also moving out with the help of the nose only same organ is helping in both inhalation and exhalation but in animal sorry in insects one way flow of air through the insect occurs that is air will enter through those spiracles which are present in the thoracic cavity or in the thorax whereas the air will move out from the abdominal spiracles so here you can see this is a picture showing the ventilation so these are the thoracic spiracles through which the air will enter and these are the abdominal spiracles through which the carbon dioxide will leave their body here you can see oxygen is entering through all these spiracles whereas carbon dioxide is leaving through these spiracles now if we compare the ventilation in mammals as i have told you that in insects muscles are contracting whereas in mammals muscles are relaxing and is achieved passively whereas in inspiration it is achieved pass passively and in mammals inspiration muscles are contracting now in insects the circulatory system is not involved in respiration as it is involved in us why because the blood is colorless and no respiratory pigment is present in the blood whereas in our body we know that respiratory pigment that is hemoglobin is present which is helping in the transport of oxygen into the cells now next topic that we have respirator is the respiratory structure and breathing mechanism of amphibians now what is the respiratory structure in amphibians amphibians can breathe through both lung and skin now what are the adaptations for the gases exchange to take place so the adaptations are that first of all the th skin is thin and highly permeable to allow rapid diffusion of respiratory gases into the blood capillaries beneath the skin 
is a network of blood capillaries to transport respiratory gases to and from body cells. The skin is kept moist by secretion of mucus by glands found on the outer surface of the body to facilitate rapid and efficient exchange of gases between the skin and the environment. So this is the adaptation of the skin for the exchange of gases in frogs. Now beneath the skin as I have told you is a network of blood capillaries to receive oxygen and transport it to the body cells. So students this is all for this video. I suppose you all have understood the respiration in insects as well as in amphibians. So thank you so much students.